Hello again. Um, today, I'm going to be going over chapter four. Uh, this chapter is pretty epic, and I actually reread it because um, just some certain spots in here that really stood out that I really liked. And, um, and it says a lot, and it reveals a lot, and you get a little glimpse into the future. Uh, you know what it's like. But although I question um, whether or not the future is so futuristic. And I'll explain why. So there's a lot about Katniss. Some is bad, some is actually good, so it balances out this time. She's getting better. She's actually getting a lot better. Um, so she's definitely uh, very cautious, and I can't wait to see her, her cautiousness uh, go into the, um, the Hunger Games and see how it's used. I'm really excited to see what she's going to do. Um, so... A quick recap, by the way, I guess, of what happened in this chapter is basically they're still on the train, going to the capital, some flashbacks, and then there's an encounter with Haymitch that's freaking epic, so that's what I'll get into in a second, but let's go ahead and talk about Katniss. Beautiful Katniss that probably has never shaved a day in her life. I can just only imagine. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, she's really very much of a stoic person. She, you know, she doesn't want to be friends with Peter to avoid, um, the pain of having to kill him. And I can actually kind of understand this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can understand her quote of saying, you know, a kind Peter is more dangerous than an unkind Peter. And I can understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it would kind of hurt if the person you're trying to kill cared about you. Opposed to, you know, the person you're trying to kill, you know, just didn't care for you and wanted to kill you. So, that would def I can definitely understand her. But then again, I mean, uh, I just think that, you know, there's more than two, there's more than black and white. There's the gray area. You know, you don't have to think, well, I have to kill him or I have to be absolute best pals with him. You can always just, you know, have an alliance, you know, do something like that. Help each other out in the Hunger Games. You know, if you're the last two left, you know, who knows? Uh, so, I don't know. So anyway, uh, I guess um, that kind of made me get whatever, but I can understand her position on that one. So, and then I learned that her mom never actually left. See, I have, I thought, I guess I assumed it, that, you know, she abandoned Katniss and Prim, and that is kind of messed up to just abandon your kids to try and run away or something. That's why I thought it, because she said, you know, you can't leave again, Mom. And I thought that's what she meant, but she 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 didn't mean literally. She meant freaking like uh, metaphorically. And it just you know she left in her mind. You know she just was just completely out of tone with reality after her husband died. And that should she? That's a normal reaction, man. I mean, come on, guy, Katniss. You know you can't hate your mom because you know she was sad. You know I know I know it probably pisses you off to see people with feelings just as much as it pissed her off to see you know. Peter cry and you know she just whenever she sees tears she's like I don't know she hates that weakness she even said she hates the weakness or she hates her mom because she has weakness and to me that's a really shitty quality to have it's a very selfish quality but anyway that's Katniss for you but she is she redeems herself in this chapter um so and then I guess you know hey Mitch you know last chapter vomited all over himself and Peter was like washing them off and stuff, and I guess um, you know, she was like, oh, he's obviously uh hel helping Haymitch, so he will favor him in the Hungry Games and give him more pro tips. And it, to me, that's just like, come on, you know, really, you know, he, 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 she she actually had a little battle in her head saying, you know, maybe he's just nice, you know, maybe he's just a kind person, and she's like, no, fuck that. And then that's when she was like, you know, I would actually not want that to happen. So I guess she's kind of like rejecting it. Her brain's like, no, I cannot accept any kind of fact. So now it kind of makes sense. You know, at first I'm thinking she's a sociopath, but it's really like a self-defense mechanism. You know, she doesn't want to have to think of the guy she has to kill to be a nice person. You know, she wants to think of him as like an animal or an enemy. So I can, um, I can totally see why she would totally, <laughs> I can totally see why totally. Um, I don't know. She, I can understand her position right now. You know, why she's trying to make, you know, reject any kind of possibility that he's a good person. So, 
Uh huh. So then we get into Katniss and the name Katniss. So I was like, wow, Katniss is a dumb name, but apparently Katniss is a a plant that I guess it grows in India to now. And I think the plant and Katniss have a lot in common. I'm pretty sure that's why the author named uh, Katniss is. Now, you're probably thinking, but David, you know, I was pretty sure that, you know, parents named their children, not authors. Well, I'm sorry, but your parents are lying to you. It turns out that authors name us after things for certain reasons. Take my name, you know. God loves me, so, you know, that's my name for you. So, you know, I was, you know, blessed with such a great name. The author really loves me, but okay, I'm gonna stop now. Um, the uh, the the name Katniss is actually some kind of plant, and the plant has arrowheads, and it has thick roots, and it's kind of like it grows in the mud. Now, if you think about it, that sounds exactly like Katniss. First of all, the arrowheads that she uses a bow and arrow. Second of all, um. You know, it has thick roots. You know, it's totally Katniss's backstory. You know, she has very, you know, deep roots where she comes from. Very, you know, a thick past and history. It's very, you know, deep in there into the in the dirt. Um, and even better that it grows in the mud. And I mean, she grew up in the mud. Basically, she grew up in the crappiest district of them all. Basically, so it it kind of the the name Katniss and the flower and her character all have very much in common. So I think that's actually kind of cool that the author act did something like that. It makes up for the stupid, you know, he's a man, you know, descriptions. You know, this is actually pretty well written. Maybe maybe she even intended, you know, I, I could totally see that happening too, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that the author did this on purpose. Obviously, she had to do some research, so. Um, so let me get into how Katniss is a badass. Okay, so... Let me tell you the story. Katniss is, you know, just chilling, you know, waking up, having breakfast with Peta and Hey Mitch. And, um, you know, she was like, hey, hey, Mitch, you know, aren't you supposed to give us, like, advice and shit? And he was like, oh, yeah, here's some advice. Stay alive. And then he just bursts out laughing. And then I guess Peta and uh, Katniss look at each other and just like, you know, what the hell? And then Peta just takes the glass that he had and just uh, smashes it to the ground. And he's like, oh, yeah, that was funny, but not for us. And Haymitch hey, hey, just gets up and just punches him in the face. Um, <laughs> and then I guess, um, uh, what's his name? Haymitch hey, was going to go reach for something I'll get into later. And then Katniss just takes a knife and stabs it in between his, uh, his hand and what he's about to grab and like right in between his fingers. And I don't know if you've ever seen The Mommy, I think it was. There was a scene like that having that. That was such a, that's just such a badass thing to do to just... I can just see how intense that was getting right there. And then Haymitch was like, oh, looks like we got some fighters this year or something like that. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then Katniss, uh, she got lucky with the knife. She like threw the knife and she kind of got like the equivalent of a bullseye, even though she was just trying to make the knife stick to the wall. So that was pretty cool. So uh, it was kind of cool. And then now Haymitch is going to train them or, you know, give them advice or whatever. So I think that's actually really, really cool. I like that. This is definitely starting to get interesting. And um, yeah. Uh, la, la, la. oh yeah, there's something about Hey Mitch and what he was grabbing that I have a question about, but I will get into that. So anyway, the dandelion that was happening in Chapter Three, I think, where she looked at the dandelion and she got reminded of, that basically started making her, you know, care about her family or um take care of her family. And the way that happened was those dandelions, I guess, reminded of her of her father's book that had a bunch of things that you could eat, like plants. And I guess Danny, you can eat dandelions, which I didn't know. And you, she um, was like, oh, I can just go collect flowers and get food like that. And then eventually go into the forest and hunt. So that was actually kind of cool. Um, so that's what the dandelion was significant. It had something to do with her father. I figured it's that much at least. Um, and I think it's kind of cool that, uh, you know, she, she notices this um, as she throws away the cookies that, Peter's dad gave her and it's funny because it's like you know she's trying to like oh no I don't want kindness or whatever blah 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 and then you know you find out later that Peter isn't the kind of person to give up and that that dandelion is kind of the you know symbolized for her not to give up so I thought that was interesting and it was kind of cool you know I, I don't know if that was intentional or not but it's like one of those accidental details that end up being really nice 
Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about how about PETA in a second, but you know, I guess start with Katniss. Um, so there's a funny quote that Katniss said, and I just, it's not, he'll have to do anything. anything it was funny. She was like, I'm glad I didn't drown the cat. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Um, so the father of Katniss, he made a pretty funny quote. Since Katniss, like I said, is a plant, he was like, you know, as long as you find yourself, you will never starve. I thought that was pretty hysterical. I had a lot of out loud reactions to this chapter. Um, okay, so let's get into uh, Haymitch. So there's something about Haymitch that I think may may or may not be true. I think he actually might be a nice dude. You know, uh, what's her face? Katniss hated him because he was kind of like sending the tributes out to their death because, you know, he was not really training them and just kind of whatever about it and didn't really like help them out at all. So he kind of lost a lot. Um, or, or I guess, you know, he's kind of really affecting District 12 a lot by just being a drunk retard. More like an awesome guy, what I would call it. But um, So that's how he's affecting it. And I can totally understand why she would hate him for that. But I think he actually might be pretty nice. And I think he actually may respect and help them. It was actually trying to help them. When he punched Pete in the face, he said that, you know, oh, well, if you have a... Uh, a bruise on your face it makes you stand up more like you're tougher like you got into a fight uh before the matches even started it makes you you know appear tough and stuff maybe they'll fear you and i actually thought that was really cool and i was surprised that um they even did that uh or he would even do that but i don't know if it was intentional i don't know if he punched him on purpose because of that or he punched him because you know they knocked the drink out of his hand probably the last one but you know it could be something like that and um and they and he agrees to help Katniss and Peta survive. So I thought that was actually really cool. And there's something about um I don't know what this is, and it, it maybe I'm just overthinking it. Um He there's something called spirits. Now, this could just be alcohol, but there's something about it, like, you know, it doesn't make sense to have a name for it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not necessary to call it anything if you're you know you can pretty much just assume it's alcohol. You know, when she was, she says, um, oh yeah, he was dropping some liquid into his drink and it looks like clear. And by the fumes of it, it looks like it's uh, spirits or something like that. And I was like, whoa, spirits, you know, is that just some drink? I mean, why is it specific? You know, I always wonder why authors choose to be specific sometimes instead of just saying alcohol, it's some alcohol, you know, I could totally could have said that it's spirits. And then it says that when, um, he punched Peta he went to go grab his spirits and I, I was wondering what exactly is it? Is it like some kind of drug that enhances something or I don't know. I th- it, may, it may just be alcohol. It probably is, but I didn't know if there was something even more like it's some kind of futuristic thing. But anyway, um, let's talk about PETA. Uh, I'm a for- unfortunately, I think PETA may be becoming less and less of a bro, which is disappointing. But before I get into PETA, let me go ahead and say this, that this is what I would do if I was in PETA's situation. If I knew that, you know, we were going to go out into the Hunger Games and die, I I would spend that time in the train to get to know her, talk to her, and be like, hey, look, you know, we should come up with some kind of strategy, blah, 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 blah you know, get Hamish on her side, and try and, like, not give up and, like, say, hey, I'm not giving up right now. Uh, we need to fight to the end, you know. I'm not going to sit here and just go along with the Capitol and be their little, their amusement. So... But he doesn't. Maybe he does it later. I think he is going to do it later. Because this is what happens at the end of the chapter, which I'll tell you. Um, and I think um, Katniss makes some kind of judgment about him because while he was on the um, the train uh, to the Capitol and you get a glimpse of the Capitol, he was actually, you know, the Capitol people were like, oh, look, it's the... Well, I don't know if they had the ads here, but they're like pointing at the, the train from District 12 coming uh, full tributes and he was like oh they're all pointing and then she was like disgusted so she got over the window and she looked at him and he's like smiling and waving which i thought i thought that actually kind of funny like oh hi how's it going and they're like kind of like a sarcastic wave but then he says you know he's like oh yeah maybe one of them is rich almost like because he wants to not give up in the hunger games now katniss thinks that he wants to kill her 
I don't think that's true. I think that his real motivation is that he's nice, but he's also not giving up. You know, I think that could totally be that he just has that not, you know, I'm not going to give up attitude. That I think that to me it's more logical than trying to kill uh, Katniss because there's no reason to kill Katniss. I think he likes her. And there'd be, it wouldn't make sense for him to give bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if everything else happened except for the bread instance where, you know, he gave her bread and for, you know, ba- for nothing, basically, then I could kind of, you know, maybe think that he was doing some kind of, you know, strategy. But from the very beginning, like, even faking his tears and something. But I don't think so. I mean, I think that he's probably generally nice, but he also doesn't want to give up. And I'm pretty sure that she's half right in the sense that, you know, he hasn't given up. But then she says he's trying to kill her. I don't, I don't think so. Definitely don't think this is the kind of guy that would kill Katniss. He seems like a nice dude. And if he if he turns out to be like that, it's going to be very disappointing. I don't think so, though. And I like that he kind of stood up. I, he was actually nice to Haymitch, but then, you know, whenever Haymitch insulted him, he, you know, kind of, like, stood up for both of them. I like that. And how he reassured her. So I think that all the signs point that he's actually nice and he's kind of wants to be there for Katniss and also wants to, you know, not give up to the end. And I like that. I really like that. I think that's one thing that the, him and Katniss have in common. Um, okay, so the last few things I will talk about, unfortunately, um, is blah, 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 blah. Just scrolling down, see the things I wrote down. Okay, okay. So I learned about the capital, and I'm learning more and more about how futuristic the future is. But it turns out I don't think the futuristic is that futuristic, and I'll tell you why. But first of all, the capital is actually around the mountains. It was the Appalach... Well, I don't even know how to pronounce that. But anyway. And I guess the mountains around the capital kind of contributed to why they won, because the rebels couldn't really get in there. Or the rebellion, you know, they couldn't like, get in there and whatever because of the mountains. And apparently they have some kind of air force, and I'm not sure if it's like you know, jets and stuff like we have? Or is it just, you know, you know, hot air balloons with guns? (laughs) I don't know. Um, So, and then she describes describes the capital as full of colorful buildings and with cars. But to me, that's not really futuristic. I mean, we have that, except for the colorful part. But besides that, the people she describes in the Hunger Games, I wish she would just be a little bit more descriptive, you know? Like, you know, just just as an author, I would think it's your duty to, like, you know, write a decent book. You, you know, just, just decent, you know? Not asking too much. And give, you know, like, decent descriptions, not just <laughs> weird. Like, she described the people like, oh, they have weird hair and uh, strange clothing. I don't understand what strange clothing is. Why don't you describe what strange is to you? What is weird to you? Weird to me, weird clothes to me would be some kind of like tin suit. Does that mean they have tin suits? I mean, you said weird, but that's weird to me, so that must mean they have tin suits. No, it's not because you're not being descriptive. So I can only imagine what weird is. And if you think about it from Katniss's perspective, if we were to walk around in, you know, our daily life clothes, she would probably think those clothes are weird. So, I don't know how futuristic that is, and I definitely know about the hair. I mean, people here dye our clothes, and I'm sure as hell think that she or dye our hair. So, if they she saw that, she, sure as hell she would think, oh, wow, we have weird hair color, too. So, you know, and not only that, um, she says that they um, they dye their skin, or at least their faces. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I don't know why anyone would want to dye their face. I mean, okay, I'm just going to stop right there. Because, you know, I'm not going to fall into something I'm going to accidentally say. And it's going to sound racist, but it's not. Okay. I'm not racist. Okay. Only if it's funny. Anyway, next <laughs> next thing I want to say is about... Um, Katniss mentioned something called a cornucopia or something. It has something to do with the Hunger Games. And I'm kind of interested what it has to do. Uh, my guess is that it's like whenever they rise up into the Hunger Games. But who knows. So... um. Holy shit, I think that's it. Didn't find any spelling errors. I wasn't really looking for them, but... Uh, besides the crappy descriptions, I think that's it. But anyway, thank you very much for listening to this. I doubt anyone did, but it doesn't matter. Because, um, anyway, I like, I like this um, This chapter. is really nice. It's a very badass scene. I really want to see that done in the movie. Alrighty, uh, have a good one.